Good evening. Good to have you with us in this edition of the Urban Debate. The entire world is spooked as a new COVID variant has surfaced in South Africa and its neighboring countries. This new COVID variant has been reported in South Africa, Hong Kong as well, and Botswana. The variant, which is right now being called with the technical name B.1.1.529. That's the scientific name, is reported to have a significantly high number of mutations and could pose a big threat to the public health. We know very little about it, but the fact that we know very little about it also means that it is leading to panic and fear and bringing back the fears of COVID just as it seemed. That the world was moving on, opening all of its borders, returning to normalcy, opening up markets, big events and gatherings, people going back to their offices, just as it seemed that as we enter a new year, we would have successfully, to a large extent, beaten COVID, even though it hadn't gone away completely, and that a lot of the nations had managed to vaccinate a large chunk of the population. Just at that time, this news has raised concerns. The new COVID variant, what do we know about it so far? How many cases? Numbers differ when it comes to how many cases. But what the experts and scientists are pointing out is that it has a high number of mutation in the spike protein. We still to find out a lot more about how quickly it transmits or how lethal it is. But basis what is known so far one cannot let a guard down. The concern is real. And until we know more about it, several nations have turned precautious. Several nations are looking at policies to again clamp down. This is said to be more infectious than Delta, could be resistant to COVID vaccines. Right now, dominating the cases that are emerging in South Africa in the past two weeks. But if it turns out to be a variant that is able to beat the COVID vaccine antibodies, then of course, that will be a big cause of worry. We're going to today find out a lot more about it, whatever we can. We're also going to ask the question of how to deal with the limited information that we have. We're also going to talk about, is the world overreacting or are we just being rightly precautious? For example, United Kingdom has banned flights from six African countries right now. Israel has barred its citizens from traveling to South Africa. Australia is bringing in tighter border rules for travelers from South Africa. India right now is screening the travelers from this region and otherwise as well. Also, the reminder has been sent to all states to ensure that proper screening and tracking continues for international travellers. France has suspended flights for at least 48 hours for Southern African region. The world needs to find out a lot more. Today, the WHO is actually holding a meeting to discuss this new variant. But the WHO does caution that it should not lead to certain discrimination against any specific country. And we should not spread panic, but we must look at what can be done. So let's talk about this. And I want to say good evening to the panelists who are joining us on this conversation. Dr. Peter English, public health expert. Dr. Julian Tang, virologist at the University of Leicester, joins me this evening. Uh, and good, always good to have Dr. Ra Raman Ganga Khedkar, former head of uh, epidemiology and communicable diseases at ICMR, member of WHO, also joining me this evening. Uh, let me start off with Dr. English. Dr. English, what can you tell us and our viewers about this new variant? It's very early days. We know it has 50 um, mutations, but we don't really know how it behaves. We've seen it taking over from Delta in some of the Southern African countries where it's been found. Um, but those are countries which, largely because the world has done a dreadful, shameful job of getting vaccines to them, is very under-vaccinated. 
We don't know how it will behave in countries where, where a much higher proportion of the population is vaccinated. So we can't tell whether vac it, it, it evades immunity from vaccination. We don't know, even know for certain how, whether it evades immunity from prior infection. It may do, but we can't tell yet. All we know is that it seems in the South African context to be sufficiently more infectious than Delta, that it's more or less re that it's replacing it quickly. I've seen estimates that it's about twice as infectious, but it's still very early days, and I'd be very cautious about accepting any estimates until we've got a lot more data. So where is the concern really stemming from, Dr. English? Is it that it, it's, uh, it's believed to be a lot more infectious or transmits much faster than the Delta variant, the other uh, very dangerous variant that we saw? Is that where the concern stems from? Yes, that, we, that it seems to have been replacing the Delta variant. We've got nothing to indicate, as far as I'm aware, that it causes any more serious disease than Delta does, just that it's spreading faster, so it must be more infectious. Okay, Dr. Uh, uh, Ganga Khedkar, uh, th this one statistic that's been told to us by uh, all experts and scientists is the high number of mutations that it, uh, this new variant has. Uh, how should a common man read it? What does that mean? A common man has to understand one thing, that this virus has enzymes that it uses in reproduction or replication, which are error-prone. So it essentially will produce different different mutations as perhaps it replicates. What is important to understand is the earlier estimates tend to suggest that every 11 days to 15 days, there would be one mutation that gets established there. By October, you know, last year, you know, there were close to about 20 different mutations that were added to the original Wuhan virus. Now we have 50 odd mutations here. But as Dr. English said, unless you know, we have certain characteristics which would, which would reveal to us that it increases disease severity, it is perhaps likely to affect our diagnostic capability. This particular virus is closer to that uh, uh, alpha one which, with which we started there you know, these are S drop, drop, S gene dropout kind of viruses. Here also, you will find that one of the genes will not light up in the diagnostic test. But we are looking at it little differently that it will help us in identifying these new cases that are coming. So essentially, as of now, we don't have much of evidence excepting that there is a question mark that it has spread a little more rapidly. There is, there is an issue that perhaps the genetic structure tends to suggest that it may, have, it may lead to development of escape mutants and therefore there could be a worry you know, in terms of efficacy of vaccines that would be there. But we still don't have a very strong evidence and not, we also do not have evidence that it increases disease severity. So we need to wait, we need to be cautious. I'm happy over one thing that even with the report of we still don't know 70 cases or let's say 30 odd cases, we are acting, the entire world is reacting very strongly. In a way, this is a good sign <clears throat> that we have learned to be vigilant. But we should not overreact and create a scare all around that we may have to just go for lockdowns all over. Yes, I, I think what is also being appreciated is the fact that um, they have communicated what they have found so far to the world. Uh, and so, you know, at least uh, the rest of the nations uh, and international bodies will be able to study it further and design their own policies around it. But while we wait for that, um, and it could take several weeks before we know a lot more, at least, about this variant, uh, Dr. English, what should our policies be or strategies be? What should various nations do? Uh, many have begun to shut down their borders already. Yes, just to pick up briefly on a point that was just being made, the, the, I believe that the PCR tests that are widely used, the same ones that we routinely use, can detect this variant. There's some difference in the way that it, it, it picks up the test, which is very useful because it, it makes it possible to, to identify the variant quite quickly. What should we be doing? Of course, doing as much testing as possible to identify it. I think you can't stop viruses from spreading across the world, but you can slow it down to allow yourself to, 
to, to take precautions to get measures in place for them. So I think it's reasonable to try and restrict travel to and from places where this virus is for the time being. I think it is inevitably going to spread to the rest of the world. I've already seen one report, which hasn't been confirmed as far as I'm aware, but it may be true, that there's been a case identified in Belgium, in Europe. So we need to be testing to find it, and we need to keep up all the things we are or should be doing already. We should be enforcing mask mandates, making sure that people in public spaces wear masks. I'm afraid our own Prime Minister has set a dreadful example for not doing so. But we must do that. We must improve ventilation in countries like the UK where I live. We're all meeting indoors because the weather's too awful to meet up outside. And indoors, you share the same air and you're more likely to get infected. So open a window. Um, if you can't open a window, put in an air filtration system. And do continue wearing masks uh, when you're not meeting people who aren't from your own household. You're absolutely right, and I think that's a reminder for uh, people across the world in all countries. Um, you know, our ma masks have moved from covering our noses to mouths to chin in India. Of course, in several other nations, it's not even mandatory to wear the mask anymore. Uh, Dr. Ganga Kedkar, and, and since we are on that point, I wanted to emphasize a little bit more on it. Is the um, you know the uh, concept and the idea of wearing a mask? really directly connected to percentage of population that's vaccinated because many of the european nations today where a large percentage of population may have been vaccinated are moving around people are moving around without masks but there may be somebody from south africa carrying the this new strain who would have landed there and would be breathing the same air i think it is very clear and we need to have stronger communication uh, uh, strategies you know which will tell to the people and impress on their mind that these vaccines prevent hospitalization and death. They are very efficient in doing that. But when it comes to prevention of infection, perhaps we will continue to follow the same mask, safe distancing, ventilation. You know, these old strategies will continue to be there. There is no either or. You know, people tend to believe that if I am vaccinated, I can drop that. That's not very fair. No, that's not correct because you may still continue to remain unprotected in terms of getting either mild infection from similar kind of strains that are circulating around or a new variant could also again come back to you because this, these are first generation vaccines. They don't prevent the infection efficiently. And I think it is also important that we need to pass a message that it's not only an issue related to masks. All those who have received first dose must take the second dose quickly, which is scheduled for them. All those who have not taken the vaccine, for save your lives, we will take care of the infection by using the masks. And all of us can do that. Yes, uh, yeah. and I'm going to come to that aspect in just a bit and talk a little bit more about it because in India we're facing a challenge actually where not too many people are also turning up for their second dose. Uh, and the gap between the those who've taken uh, one dose and, and, and yet for the second dose is just widening. This is not a good time to be letting our guard down and it could get dangerous. But if I, if, uh, uh, if I can just come back to this variant itself and the fact that we know very little about it, Dr. English, um, will each of the nations also have to start off their own exhaustive screening and genome sequencing? Because uh, do we know how long this variant has been around? What if it's already entered several of the other nations? We just haven't caught it there. I don't know that I can answer that question. I'm not sure how long it's been around. I know it's been, they've been aware of it in Southern Africa for a, a few weeks, but not a lot more than that. A lot of the testing is actually being done on sewage. You can detect the virus in sewage, and the sewage obviously pulls uh, data, if you like, from lots and lots of different people. So if you find the variant in the sewage, you know you can, should be starting to look in the population serving that, that sewage outlet. So that, that's, that, that's the way of looking at larger groups of people and not testing as many different individuals, um, a more efficient way of doing it. Just coming back to the vaccines, we, we know that against the original variant, the Wuhan strain, a single dose was moderately effective. Two doses were better. With Delta variant, a single dose isn't particularly effective. You really need two doses. 
and that protects you well against being seriously ill, against being going to hospital. It's not as good at preventing you from being infected and infectious. It only prevents infection and infectiousness in, to about 30% of what it would otherwise have been, which means a lot of people who have had two doses can still be infectious and pass it on to other people, but they probably won't know they're ill because they have such minor symptoms, if any. After three doses, it looks like the chances of being infectious are a lot smaller of the order of probably less than 5%. And if you're going to stop transmission of the virus through vaccination, we're likely to need three doses. And that's with the Delta strain. We don't yet know whether the vaccine is going to work against this new strain. We hope it will, and there's good reason to think that it might well, but we just don't know whether it'll work at all or how effectively against this, this new uh, strain, which I believe the um, WHO is likely to call the new strain. That's the Greek letter, um, new. Yes. Um, I believe that's like, Dr. Gandaketra might have more details on that than I do. Yes, uh, Dr. Ganga Khedkar, is, th you, is that likely to be the name, the new variant? <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me let me now uh, try and um, you know get the larger picture here, and and a lot of this actually did get discussed many many months ago, maybe when we were in the middle of the second wave in this nation, um, and elsewhere also basis how uh, the COVID cases were going up or down. But for, because for many uh, weeks now, we've seen cases fall. It's not been such a big concern in India and, and for many other countries. What is going on right now, Dr. English? Why is it that several European nations are having to go back to a lockdown mode uh, and the cases are suddenly rising? I, I, um, is there a new cause for it? How would we explain that? Well, I think it varies a bit from country to country. So it's, it's hard to say this is the cause. But we have seen relaxations of some of the restrictions. Um, we haven't seen adequate levels of vaccination yet. We've still only got about 60, 70% of the population vaccinated in many Western European countries. And as I was explaining, the, the, you need to have three doses really to stop you from being able to infect other people. With, with two doses, about 30% of people will still be able to be infected and infect others. And with the Delta strain, which is so much more infectious than the previous strains, and it looks like this new strain is going to be a whole lot more infectious again, you need a much higher proportion of the population immune to stop spread. That being the case, any reduction in people wearing, doing, taking the other precautions, the ventilation, uh, the masks, the hand washing, those things, if, if you relax those restrictions, the virus is going to come back. And I think that's what's been happening. Other countries have said, oh, our case rates have gone right down. It's safe enough to start to, to, to drop these restrictions, not require people to wear masks on, the, on trains and things. And having dropped those restrictions, the disease has come storming back. It was done too soon. Yes, uh, Dr. Ganga Ketkar, it, it seems like we are, you know, kind of in that cycle. Some of the waves may be worse than the others. Uh, but the minute you let your guard down, the cases come back. Is there any other explanation? Um, here for us in India, we perhaps are seeing a decline mainly because we had large proportion of population which was protected due to natural infection itself. And that protection tends to last longer. And the vaccination rollout that tended to occur occurred uh, almost at the same time when Delta wave, Delta's wave, uh, uh, our second wave, was on at that juncture. Whereas in other parts of the world, it was a reverse story, especially in the developed world. They had the vaccination rollout as the first thing, and then Delta wave struck. And therefore, perhaps we are seeing some differences. And we also need to understand that there is a huge vaccine hesitancy. The uh, Slowly, the restrictions that have been that were put up uh, to contain this particular infection are being lifted across. And therefore, you are finding that the battle that each individual has within his mind, do I go for earning livelihood or do I worry about my own health, is playing in a manner that could be difficult to handle over a period of time. I think, you know, as we open up, we have to remember that the reservoir of infection continues to exist 
mm. within the surroundings and since it is there and the vaccine does not protect you completely against acquiring infection again you will find that people will keep on getting infection it could be mild it could be asymptomatic some of us who may not be vaccinated may develop severe covid disease and may succumb to it i think it is important that all of us need to learn that part impress upon the minds of people that they have to do both they follow the covid appropriate behavior even if the lockdown or restrictions are being lifted you know try to maintain a lifestyle i would still call it as a lifestyle which would be safer no in addition to taking vaccine i think we have to learn we have to live with it for some time things could be different over a period of time yes it's it's just that many people don't understand how long this sometime may be they may we, we got into this pandemic with many believing it could just be two weeks uh, to two months uh and now we're coming close to two years dr julian tangs with us uh, good evening and thank you uh, we had a bit of a technology glitch uh and trouble getting through but i'm glad you're here with us dr julian uh, there seems to be already a conversation going on also about whether we are overreacting based is the information we have about the new variant but some may say well we can we need to take all the precautions possible right now because we don't know enough about the new variant uh where do you stand on this So in the UK we've had lots of experience with uh, variants and reacting too late. So I think the UK government's done the right thing to restrict travelers from these areas. But this variant may like the other variants, you know, burn out without too much impact. We've seen that with uh, to some extent the lambda variant, the mu variant from Colombia and some of the local variants in the UK, the Bristol, Liverpool and this AY2 variant. So I think there's always a healthy kind of caution that we can apply. Uh, and early appropriate uh, measures like you know perhaps returning to some uh, masking uh, if and when this variant appears on the mainland in the UK all right so you're saying that you know those basic level of precaution of course must come in masking we've been constantly saying it don't let your mask down here in india it's still mandatory and everybody needs to wear it of course we keep forgetting to because world just be, uh, had begun to see uh, seem a lot more normal but you mentioned certain other variants as well and you said that we we need to see whether this dies out quickly or actually uh, survives now why is it that between the big delta variant and the delta plus and now we hadn't heard of anything else that was such a concern surely the virus which is constantly evolving with new variants and mutations in various parts of the world we are actually seeing a lot more of these uh, uh, every every month but for some reason we are talking a lot more about this specific variant Yeah so <clears throat> I think there are a lot more mutations in this S gene uh, region for this variant and a lot of those mutations are very familiar to us with the alpha beta gamma delta variants that we know have been causing problems. Now uh, interestingly the uh, beta and gamma variants didn't really spread amongst the UK population that much but they have caused problems in say Brazil the gamma variant and South Africa the beta variant. So each population is not the same as other populations and you really have to react according to your local population. uh behavior and how the virus uh, behaves in that population that uh, we may not even see this variant uh arriving in the UK for some time and then people start to get a bit you know annoyed why are we having all these restrictions when the variant's not even here um so i think there's a balance between what we do as a precaution i mean wearing masks now even for flu and other respiratory viruses is not unreasonable anyway given the burden on the nhs at the moment but actually you know for example locking down all borders locking everybody at home i think is not quite appropriate at this stage because we're not really seeing that variant coming to the uk just yet if we see it spread across south africa and then more places in europe uh, and north america where you know uk tourists often go uh, that will be a concern okay if i take that point and take it to dr english uh, as i also say uh, good evening to dr Ra- uh, rajiv jaydevan and professor vidya sagar joining me right now but dr english very quickly to you we saying that uh, in india the government has said that we don't have evidence that this variant has entered our nation i think same goes for united kingdom but would that be a prudent thing to highlight to the regular public right now because i don't know if we were even looking for this variant most nations had uh, become pretty um, easy in terms of testing tracking travelers coming in uh, the rules that we had for these travelers from across the world 
Well, I think, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the standard PCR tests we have can detect this variant, as I'm sure Dr. Tang can confirm. Um, so we, we, we are able to identify it if it arrives. Of course, we only test a minority of the population. So uh, if you're not testing the right people, you won't find it. And that's where the sort of looking at sewage projects that I was talking about earlier, which I know they're doing in Southern Africa, mm -hmm. um, can be useful. I, I would disagree slightly with Dr. Tang, in, who was saying that it's about how it behaves in your population. Um, I, I think the main thing is how much in, more infectious it is. If a strain is not any more infectious than another strain, and it doesn't evade vaccination or immunity from natural infection, then it's not going to be an issue. What we saw with the Delta variant, and what we fear we may see with this one, based on the, right, the way it's replaced Delta in, in Southern Africa, is that it may be a lot more infectious. And if it is a lot more infectious, then we would expect it to spread more. It's possible that there are features of Southern Africa and, and, the, and our population here that are different, but I think the main thing is how much more infectious the virus strain is. Would you want to uh, respond to that? Uh, me? Yes. <clears throat> Uh, well, I mean, South Af Southern Africa is, is quite a unique population in in one sense that you have a lot of TB, a lot of HIV, yes. uh, where the immunosuppression that brings may allow the virus to spread further. As we saw in the UK with the beta variant, so the original South African variant, the B1.351 variant, it didn't really spread across the UK, although we found some cases here. And similar with the Brazilian variant that spread across Brazil, um, we didn't really see that spread in the UK either. So it's really down to how a virus spreads in a certain population. And transmissibility is not just about the virus. Uh, unfortunately, it depends on the host as well. And if you have host, um, host um, characters that may allow the virus to spread more easily, for example, an unvaccinated population, uh, then you're going to get spread of the virus. But that's with a host population that's more susceptible than in others. And the UK population, along with a lot of other European populations are now heavily vaccinated. And I suspect there may be spread, but there may not be severe disease based on that vaccination level. All right. I want to just bring in for a bit a uh, little more about how India needs to then respond. And both you gentlemen have, you know, given your perspective of whether uh, it also depends on our own population, our own uh, situation right now. Professor Vidya Sagar, uh, when it comes to... Uh, India's situation where we still have a large percentage of the population that is yet to get its second shot. There is still at least 15 to 20 crore people who are yet to get their first shot. Um, uh, and so how should we be responding to the news of a new variant which could be a lot more dangerous but we don't know enough about? Are you asking me? I'm yes. Sorry. Yes, you. Well, okay, so the percentages are that... Um... 85% of Indian, 83% of Indian adults have received one dose, and 45% have received the second dose. Uh, the, the vaccine that is predominant in India is the Covishield, which is the AstraZeneca vaccine that has a four month gap between two shots. But if you look at the vaccination numbers, you will see that for the last month or so, second dose is comfortably outstripping the first dose the number of people who are getting their second dose is approximately two to three times the number of people who are getting the first dose. So that gap will cl close very, very fast. And I wanted to just respond to another question you asked. Uh, I think it was Professor English, if I'm not mistaken, that how long has this uh, variant been around? It's not widely appreciated that the Delta variant when we went back and looked at the virus sequences, the first occurrence was in October of 2020. Yes. It broke out with a vengeance in March of 2021. So I think everyone just assumed that it had sneaked into the country the day before, but it hadn't. It was there for a long time. It was lying down, and then it broke out. And as several of the panelists have emphasized, and I agree with them totally, the Delta variant, which was the dominant variant in South Africa, is being overtaken by the new or new, both are the same thing, okay. variant, uh, in, the, in the last uh, week to 10 days. The number of cases is still small, but the real key is going to be that as for some of the studies I have been able to dig up from the internet, approximately 50% of South Africans 
have tested positive for the presence of antibodies. They have been exposed to the previous variant. So the question is, does the new variant evade those antibodies or does it not? If the answer is that the previous exposure confers some immunity against the new variant, then the effect will be not so much. Similarly with the vaccination as well. So I think the correct thing for us to do is to be cautious, but to avoid what I will call knee-jerk overreactions, because shutting everything down, shutting down factories, sending people home, shutting children uh, schools and sending children home, that can come at a much later time. It will be a massive overreaction at this point in time. That, that's my comment. Yes. Uh, uh, OK, so for now, uh, what many countries are looking at is to say, OK, we're not going to allow travelers coming in from the South Afri Southern African region, uh, um, South Africa and the neighboring countries to, to our side. But, you know, the reason why I ask this question about how long has it been around? Do we know? It also stems from the fact that we right now are still looking and researching and studying a lot more, looking for more data about this variant. Is also because it, we, we, we can't be caught off guard. What if it's already in our country, in India, and we haven't really just found, the right, uh, found it yet? Uh, this is the kind of surveillance we may or may not be doing. That, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ganga Khedkar, was essentially the point that I was trying to drive at. It, um, to say that it's just been in South Africa for two weeks and it's not in India, uh, we, will we become complacent by saying that? Because we may have to actually start looking and testing more aggressively and sending a lot more samples from across the state to those uh, special labs to find out if uh, I indeed this virus, uh, this strain is present here. I don't think government may have had said that it is not in India. It has not been reported in India. Would right. Be, yes. <laughs> be a correct thing. And I, what is also important to understand is at least there is some evidence that the decline in new infections is continuing to happen over the last couple of months' time. If this was one which perhaps was to evade natural infection-induced immunity or vaccine-induced immunity, perhaps we should have seen some increase that, that would have been detected so far, especially when you had a festival season that was coming in. But as I keep on saying, I think it is good to think that it is likely to hit me. As an individual, as a state, I need to take adequate steps to protect me or my people. And I think that opportunity we are still getting at this juncture, because the numbers are not increasing, we have still not, uh, not uh, had a single case that was reported to be due to this variant. So we all need to work together and ensure that it perhaps may not affect either the healthcare system or even individuals worse way. All right, let's come to the one big aspect uh, of fighting COVID, which is the vaccines. Um, and right now, as many of you have already pointed out, we don't know enough whether these vaccines that we have currently will work with this variant or not. Hopefully it should. But then, Dr. Jayadevan, what we can, though, look at is speeding up the pace of vaccination in our country. Um, sh should now be a good time to say, OK, let's uh, reduce the gap especially for COVID shield, which is the biggest vaccine that we're using in our country right now, reduce the gap from the current 85 days uh, to maybe a month, such that more people can be eligible and get their second shot. Yes, India at this point is in a relatively quiet phase of the pandemic. As we know, Europe is having a surge and early indications of perhaps an early spike was detected in South Africa, as was mentioned here. From India's perspective, uh, we need uh, to get that second dose of vaccine out to all of these individuals who received one dose because we know that immediately after the second dose, you're going to have a good three-month window which can prevent infection from happening. We know that vaccines are good preventing infections, but that, uh, that effect tends to wane after the first few months. But vaccines continue to be excellent in preventing severe disease. So India can work on it on two fronts. One, get the second dose out to as many people as possible. And secondly, in anyone who has had natural infection before, even one dose is going to produce a robust form of immunity, which is called hybrid immunity, which 
both of which will be able to counter any variant, at least in the initial term. And as far as the immune system goes, we have other arms of the immunity. As we all know, there's something called the T cells, which actually protect against severe disease. And these T cells cannot be fooled by such mutations. You know, the virus has a, a finite set of mutations, I'm told, by senior virologists. And a virus cannot have a huge number of mutations so that its fitness is not affected. So in other words, if the virus produces too many mutations, the virus will stop existing. So we have hope in that our T cell immunity is going to protect us from severe disease. But that being said, I'd like to highlight a very simple principle in math. A small percentage of a large number is still a large number. In other words, India is a large country with its number of people. Now, even if a small percentage of people get infected, our healthcare systems can get quickly overwhelmed, which is why we must not sit complacent based on a fairly good, fairly, fairly well-progressing vaccination coverage. We need to get this out as quickly as possible. And as you rightly said, we may even want to consider reducing the dose if enough people have completed their second dose. Yes, uh, because right now, in, in many parts of the world, the, the policy is already in place. Others are debating uh, about a booster dose. Uh, and far from that conversation, that the, uh, as recently as last week, uh, the ICMR has ruled out any need for booster dose right now. We're still do, uh, talking about how to speed up the pace of vaccination such that more people get their second dose. Uh, uh, Dr. Julian, Covishield essentially is uh, similar to AstraZeneca vaccine that's there in UK, uh, but the time period between the two doses is much different. Uh, would you say that keeping it at three months is too long and now we know enough about the vaccine to shorten that period and maybe protect more people? Yeah, well, again, I think it depends on what's happening in your population. <clears throat> if, the, if the virus is relatively quiescent or it's, it's not mutating, now we know from previous data that that extended uh, interval is actually quite effective. If you're dealing with a new variant like this, new B1.1.529, uh, coming into the population later on, you may want to kind of narrow that gap and boost that immunity from the first, between the first and second doses to improve that cross-reactive cross immunity that these vaccines give. These vaccines are based on the old Wuhan virus. Uh, they're only protecting now because of that cross-reactive immunity that they're generating in the B and T cell responses. Dr. Peter English, would you like to weigh in on this? Yes, there's a trade-off here. Dr. Tang was commenting on the fact that you get better immunity if you increase the interval between the first and second doses. But if there's a huge threat and you need to get more people to have their second dose sooner in order to give them protection, that might be worth doing, even if the quality of immunity they have eventually isn't quite as good. And as and when they get a third dose, that will probably increase it to at least as good as it would have been, much better than it would have been, um, and the, the interval then becomes less of a, an issue. Okay. Uh, or, 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 I, I, in fact, that I think is is a question and a debate that I'm sure Dr. Ganga Khedkar wants to weigh into, since it's a debate that's raging on in our country today. I don't want to start a new debate on TV channel, <laughs> <laughs> but but what I would say is, the, no step that we take would be having only benefits. There are risks that are associated with it. And therefore, most often, when we look at strat public health strategies, we, we may have to take calculated risks and there has to be some kind of consensus about it. So far, the consensus that tends to be there is, you know, we should try to expedite the population to take the second dose, which most of them are already eligible. As of now, there has been a dramatic increase, as Dr. Vidya Sagar has also alluded to, that the coverage for second dose has improved in the last one month's time. We still have time. I think there are ways to stop, and we need to weigh those risks. If we decide to reduce the dose uh, interval between these two dosages, what would be its impact is an issue that needs larger deliberation and a consensus that should emerge, which we will have to communicate to the population. So perhaps you know, the best way is to avoid those uh, debates right on the TV, but we need to reflect within 
na, and brainstorm over those issues and take appropriate steps. The sole reason why I'm still continuing to be on that particular line is we don't have any evidence so far that this particular variant is likely to cause havoc everywhere. There is there is reason to be cautious, but reason that doesn't lead to a panic should be one of our communication strategies. Okay, so I I'm going to play the devil's advocate here and take this point across to Professor uh, Vidya Sagar. But Professor Vidya Sagar, in the past we've seen, by the time we find enough evidence that it may cause havoc, it's already begun to cause havoc and it becomes then too difficult to do anything about it. Well, that statement is not exactly correct because the INSACOG team that was meant to isolate the viruses and sequence them and come out with the DNA sequence became operational only around March 1st. And that was just about the time that the Delta variant hit. So we were actually unprepared because we didn't have the mechanisms in place. Also, please don't forget that until March 1st of this year, vaccination was limited to only frontline workers. Vaccination for the general public was started only on March 1st. Therefore, when the Delta variant hit India, it hit essentially a 100% vaccine naive population. That's why it called havoc. The situation is completely different today. We have about 70% uh, seropositivity. We have, even if you count only the second dose, 42% vaccine penetration. And we have the capacity to sequence viruses. So we're not going to be in the same situation. By the time we isolate enough of these uh, uh, new variant samples, we should be able to see the impact on the ground, if any, as Dr. Ganga Ketka says. So just to summarize in one sentence, I think your analogy is not uh, quite accurate. Okay, so fair point that you are making that the, the actual committee that was uh, tracking and doing the genome sequencing actually got created and empowered with all the resources uh, pretty much by February, March. And that's when, um, you know, we, a week, few weeks later, we found out about it, even though the Delta variant had been in our country since October. So hopefully that's not going to happen this time around. Doctor, uh, uh, that being said, Dr. Jayadevan, is there anything that as citizens we need to know right now many people had plans to travel it's the holiday season several people uh, flights are actually opening up further today we learned that the government is trying uh, is planning to further resume more international flights from mid-december uh, contrary to what some european nations are doing what should the citizens do and how should they plan their lives i would like to draw your attention back to what dr ganga ketkar appropriately said. He said he used the term COVID appropriate behavior. And that is being sidelined all over the world under various guises. For instance, highly vaccinated nations have discarded many of these measures and some of them are suffering as a result. Now, India, as I mentioned, is in the quiet phase. We have a little bit of, um, of uh, maneuvering room here. But if India is going towards a surge, that behavior has to be uh, has to be upgraded uh, of sorts. So um, we must also not forget that this particular virus, we have to gain control of its environment. You know, we, we are vaccinating people, uh, we are giving people masks, but the virus is spreading through the air. And we need to recognize the, and underline the fact that this virus essentially is an indoor spreading virus where many people meet together in a closed area. It can be a home, it can be a restaurant, it can be a classroom, or it can be an office building or a movie theater. So we need to keep that in mind and try to improve the air quality, which includes air exchange rates, uh, open all the doors and windows. And if meetings can be arranged online and if meetings can be arranged outdoors, it's a lot safer than having a bunch of people huddled together in a, in a closed room and uh, talking and uh, engaging in festivities. That can be risky. Even if one individual uh, carries a virus, an entire group can be infected. I'll take you to a, uh, to a story that was tweeted by Dr. Christian Drosten in Germany. He said, uh, he tweeted uh, the, uh, the, uh, the experience of somebody who said 20 people attended a birthday party under the 3G scheme, which basically means they were vaccinated and uh, they were also tested on the same day. But the end, at the end of it, 
10 out of 20 got infected. So this is what happens when you meet indoors, even after full vaccination. So if we can uh, stick to COVID-appropriate behavior, as Dr. Ganga Ketkar said, I think it will be good in the long run. Well, we can keep trying to remind people, um, uh, but it's really uh, up to the people. And we've seen in the last one year that it becomes very difficult uh, to actually implement COVID-appropriate behavior. I'm going to thank all of you for joining me. I must say that uh, a few of our experts were here for a limited time, but I got greedy since the conversation was so interesting. And uh, we held on to all of you throughout this conversation. But thank you for giving us your time. Uh, like our experts were pointing out, uh, these are initial days. We have very limited information from what we do know it is possible that this new variant or new variant as it may be called uh, the name uh, uh, the nomenclature is done by who it could be more potent than delta variant the last big one that uh, literally created havoc in our country during summers it could be that this new variant uh, transmits faster it could also be that it is more immune to vaccines and the antibodies that are being generated currently because of those vaccines. But a lot more data, a lot more research, a lot more study will have to be done. These are initial days, two weeks, uh, that the South African nations have actually known about it and have now shared this information with the rest of the world, such that the rest of the world can also start doing their own research, start taking precautions. What could happen in the meantime, because this could, this could take a few weeks, is that countries become a lot more cautious, at least in terms of international travel, uh, in terms of tracking, testing, screening. What can you do? For now, we don't have evidence to suggest it's here already. Again, more testing, aggressive testing may have to be done. But the only thing that you can do is wear a mask. And if you still haven't taken your vaccine shot, then go ahead and do that. Thank you so much for joining us on this conversation. But let's also get you some ground reports. India needs to take care to not drop its guard. Precautions are being followed strictly at our airports, railway stations and metro stations. Now, while precautions are strict at some places, we also did find that they're a little lax at some other places where people are not even bothering to wear masks. Here's a status check by our reporters. We're reporting from outside the Coimbatore airport and we just landed here from Chennai. We took an Air India flight from Chennai to Coimbatore. And with the new variant, COVID variant that has been detected, there is, of course, a lot of concern about the precautionary measures that have been put in place by state administrations and also uh, at airports such as these. And from our own experience, what we can say is that uh, while at the Chennai airport, the checking uh, in terms of thermal scanning or masks was not that rigorous here at Coimbatore airport, we were asked to show our vaccination certificate. Uh, so only after we showed our vaccination certificate, the final vaccine certificate and they allow us to exit so clearly uh, there is a lot of checking that is happening inside the airport and even inside the airline COVID guidelines were followed uh, more or less and uh, but what has to be pointed out is pointed out is the laxity among people to wear masks properly even though a lot of them are wearing masks they are not wearing it in the right manner so that of course is a cause of concern and even at Chennai airport uh, you know, there was no thermal scanning as such that was done. So all of this, of course, uh, you know, once again shows us that this is not the time to uh, relax or be laid back. The experts have raised alarm about the new COVID variant that has been detected. And uh, some say that it is more trans than the Delta variant that was first detected in India. So clearly, once again, uh, you know, even though the cases, COVID cases are significantly lower than what it was compared to last couple of months, uh, this is no time to relax. A new variant has been detected. Alarm has been, uh, there's a lot of concern around the world about this new variant. And uh, we, we cannot, of course, uh, uh, afford to be laid back. COVID-19 cases are on the rise in Europe and people need to 
still be very very careful in India uh, as well we are here at the Delhi Metro in uh, Kanat place and uh, we will uh, try and speak to people and understand from them uh, what are the safety measures are there just stringent measures uh, pehle the unko abhi bhi follow karte rehne ki zarurat hai bilkul bilkul zaruri hai kyunki ye dikkat hai ki hum dekhte itni bheed hai to usme hame ye follow karne chahiye main to koi isliye carry karti hu aur zaruri bhi hai kyunki covid ki wajah se ye zaruri hai aap logon ko safe lagta hai delhi metro se travel karna aur safety precautions jo hain wo aapko lagta hai pure liye ja rahe hain as far as delhi metro han ji bilkul ji bilkul kitna aapko कंफर्टेबल लगता है मेट्रो से जाना जो एक रियलिटी चेक हम कहते हैं कि पहले बहुत सख्त था अब शायद थोड़ा लू उतने स्ट्रिक्ट नहीं रह गया हो उसके बिना काम चल नहीं सकता एज पर कमी नहीं है जैसे ट्रैफिक है उसको देखते हुए इट्स वेरी मच हेल्पफुल सैनिटाइजर वगैरह तो रख रहे हैं मगर मास्क वगैरह भी लगा रहे हैं मगर वो डिस्टेंस जो बना रखते हैं वो नहीं है मेजर्स जो हैं जो पहले लिए जा रहे थे आपको कहीं ना कहीं लगता है अभी भी उतने ही स्ट्रिक्ट हैं या आपको लगता है कहीं ना कहीं थोड़ी कमी पेशी हो गई है नहीं नहीं कमी पेशी तो नहीं है मेट्रो अपनी तरफ से पूरा कोशिश कर रही है बेटर बनाने के लिए ठीक है अभी भी कर रही है ऐसा नहीं है कि कुछ दिक्कत है ठीक है थोड़ा भीड़ तो बढ़ी रही है पॉपुलेशन के साथ तो हंड्रेड परसेंट सीटिंग भी अब सरकार ने अलाउ की है तो मेट्रो बिल्कुल करेगी जी 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 बिल्कुल 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 सरकार और मेट्रो बेहतर करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं Uh, so uh, there is a mixed bag of people over here. You know, one person we heard saying that uh, rules need to be more strictly followed. Uh, one, uh, the other people are saying that it is doing what it can, uh, given the kind of volume of people that Delhi Metro sees on a daily basis, especially now that 100% capacity uh, has been allowed to. But what importantly the citizens of Delhi can do is uh, maintain social distancing, wear their masks, and do whatever is uh, in. is possible in their capacity uh, to be aware of covid-19 and to ensure that the pandemic is still not over jaipur ka gandhinagar railway station jiski tasveer main aapko dikha raha hu yahan aap dekhenge sanitizer ke liye vyavastha hai lekin sanitizer nahi hai sirf vyavastha ke naam par ye mahaj ek machine lagayi hui hai aur khali botal padi hai jo sab kuch band hai aur ab baki nirakshan ki agar hum baat kare to aage badhte hain aage jab hum badhenge to likha hua hai mask nahi to pravesh nahi यहाँ पे हो सकता है मास्क का इस्तेमाल कर रहे हो ना कर रहे हो ये तस्वीरें हम तब दिखा सकते हैं जब कोई ट्रेन आ रही हो लेकिन फिलहाल लोग टिकट लेने के लिए यहाँ टिकट विंडो पर हैं वहाँ हम चलेंगे और जानेंगे कि आखिर किस तरह का वहाँ पर मौली देखिए टिकट लेकर लोग आए लेकिन मास्क इनके चेहरे पर नहीं है चलिए अंदर की तरफ चलते हैं और वहाँ जानते हैं जहाँ लिखा हुआ है मास्क नहीं तो प्रवेश नहीं आरक्षण करने के लिए लोग यहाँ पहुँचे हैं लेकिन ऐसा ना हो कि कहीं तीसरी लहर का आरक्षण कर बैठे ये टिकट तो फिर भी सीट क्लियर हो जाएगी लेकिन अगर कोरोना की तीसरी लहर आ गई तो फिर हॉस्पिटल्स में सीट लेना बहुत मुश्किल हो जाएगा ये तस्वीर मैं आपको दिखा रहा हूँ टिकट विंडो पर बहुत सारे लोग जो बिना मास्क के हैं भैया मास्क कहाँ है अपना मास्क कहाँ है मास्क जेब में जेब में है और लोगों की जिंदगी जेब में क्यों रख रहे हो दूसरों की परवाह क्यों नहीं कर रहे हो एक तरफ जहां लगातार मरीज बढ़ रहे हैं जयपुर में 155 के आसपास मरीज हो चुके हैं ये देखिए यहां पर यहां भी मास्क नहीं है बिना मास्क के आराम हो रहा है उस जगह पर जहां साफ तौर पर लिखा गया है कि मास्क नहीं तो प्रवेश नहीं नो मास्क नो एंट्री बिना मास्क पाए जाने पर जुर्माना भी होगा लेकिन कौन करेगा यहाँ जब इस प्राइमिस में लोग मौजूद हैं बिना मास्क के जुर्माना नहीं हो रहा है कोई व्यक्ति यहाँ देखने वाला नहीं है तो क्या सिर्फ इस तरह के स्टिकर्स लगा देने से कोरोना रुक जाएगा अगर हम सचेत नहीं होंगे तो क्या हालात होंगे इसका अंदाज़ा भी नहीं लगा सकते क्योंकि जयपुर में वो दौर हमने देखा है जब अस्पताल में बेड नहीं मिले थे अब भले ही टिकट का आरक्षण यहाँ ये लोग करवा लें सीट रिजर्व करवा लें लेकिन अगर तीसरी लहर आ जाती है इन लापरवाही के चलते तो बहुत मुश्किल होगा अस्पतालों में बेड बुक करवाना That's what we have to remember and stay masked up. We're going to take a quick break. Lots more news on the other side. Stay with me.